before we get started today, I'd like to offer a quick introduction to the project. So first of all, in the very early 80s, my parents bought a couple acres in a neighborhood where they were building ferrous cement houses, and they started on their ferrous cement dome. And eventually what we wound up with was a ferrous cement dome with an earth retaining wall around it and on the side a, a wood framed uh, living quarters. But in the mid thousands, <laughs> we decided to uh, cut the top off the dome and go a different route with the project. So we built a flange and uh, to, to have a pony wall that would hold a roof. So with the hole in the roof, our underground house has become an earth sheltered house, but it still is kind of a unique earth sheltered house. So we have the dome with the exterior of retaining wall and we'll be able to bury this structure all the way around. So it's going to be earth sheltered almost the entire circumference of the dome. But we needed to build some uh, pretty substantial retaining walls in order to uh, you know, terrace our, our relatively flat piece of property to the point that, that we could actually bury this sucker. And so that's what these retaining walls are. We, uh, I think part three of this video series, we did the lower wall and then did the upper wall, then the extension of the lower wall. And that gets us to where we are now, where we, in this video, are going to be putting the hardware cloth onto our metal armature that we built with the stairs and uh, this little planter at the end. So welcome to part eight, fair cement house build. Picking up right where we left off in part seven, I'm just cleaning up uh, the shape of my structure, getting rid of all the, the tail ends of the, the metal that stick out. So the plan here is to wrap the metal armature with a layer of uh, galvanized fencing on either side and then also uh, to put hardware cloth on either side of that. And this is all, you know, a little bit overkill. But basically what I do is, you know, I, I'll measure the width of the section I'm working on and, uh, you know, I'm straightening out the piece and then I eyeball sort of some of the initial cuts that I might need to make to, to get some of the shape going and just uh, go for it. You know, it's like wrapping a present. This part can be pretty time consuming. You know, I had intended to build a very simple shape and have lots of you know straight runs and gentle curves and i wound up putting in all these corners you know uh but but i thought it was an important sort of architectural feature you know i i with, with all the the flat walls i really thought it was important to sort of show off some of the the concrete shapes that i could do in in this section so when you walk out of the house you see something that's you know hopefully kind of <laughs> impressive and maybe uh inspiring artistically to somebody before we get real deep into it i want to take another detour and sort of discuss how much metal you need in your wall because for whatever reason and with these stairs i really felt like more is better and I just kept adding layer after layer after layer of stuff to it so let's take a look at some of the uh historical photos <laughs> from from houses built you know 30 years ago that are still standing and and see how they did it you know so here's a little data sheet from uh, bob foot he was the guy who who started this neighborhood and was teaching the the owner builders how to work with ferrous cement so what he was preaching because uh, he was our our ferrous cement guru was building one inch thick ferrous cement uh, structures out of three eighths inch rebar you know the uh, the six by six remesh and hardware cloth so he was telling us that uh, uh, 12 inch centers on our rebar with one layer of remesh on you know the outside or wherever and then either one layer of hardware cloth on either side or two layers of chicken wire on either side or plaster lath as you can see here in the corner on this first house i just want to make note of how much care went into the spacing of the rebar you can see in the foreground this front structure like it really is on one foot centers and then in the back on the dome you know it's less than a one foot center you know i guess he was thinking uh you know the way i do <laughs> with the overkill but you can see there's rebar remesh uh hardware cloth then on this house 
Uh, you can see there was some compromises made in the one foot center of the rebar. Some places are a little tighter, some places are a little wider, but it still maintained the, the remesh and hardware cloth and rebar formula. This house is a little confusing to look at because this is just a small kitchen right here and so you can see all the way through it. So it looks like there's double the material that there actually is. But this house got a, a little bit more relaxed on the rebar spacing. Some places are, are a little heavy in rebar, other places a little light. So this structure is getting pretty pretty light with the rebar. You can see there's some very large spacing in between the rebar, but he still maintains the uh, hardware cloth and remesh uh, formula. Now looking at this one, uh, they have deleted the remesh. It is just rebar and hardware cloth. Until finally we get to this dome. This dome has no rebar. I mean, it has rebar in the footer. There's only rebar in the footer. The actual dome is remesh and chicken wire, and that's it. No rebar. And uh, he, you know, he had to build it differently. He used a form, and he laid out his metal on top, and then placed the concrete on top of the form. He had to do that because without the rebar, there's just no, uh, you know, <laughs> structure to <laughs> to stand on, I guess. But you know the. The, the point of this is all these houses are still standing. All of them are still being lived in. And, you know, uh, the, the exact mix of how much metal you put in there seems to be pretty fluid. And, and there's just a lot of experimenting going on with, with a ferrous cement design. So when you're placing your metal, just do whatever feels right to you, you know, uh, on my stairs, I went a little heavy with the metal, and then on the wall, I went a little bit light. But I'm I'm confident it'll all work out. I'm just gonna throw this quick time lapse in here, yeah, just sort of to give an example of what I do. You know, I just tack up a piece of metal and I make it work. Then I start anchoring it down, cutting, making relief, you know, folding it, whatever it takes. And then before you know it, you got a piece of metal up. I just, I still, I, I think this is way overkill, but it's, it's what I'm doing. Uh, I think I'm getting away from the original spirit of, of fair cement, which is supposed to be kind of minimal and as cheap as possible. So on this section of the wall, I'm going a little bit lighter duty. So I have, uh, you know, these are four inch squares. So I have the metal for my beam, my uh, my flange here, the rebar is on a one foot spacing. But then in between, I'm just relying on the structure of the cow panel. And the idea is, you know, each one of these wires probably has enough tensile strength to support a, a small car or something. So all this material together, <laughs> covered in concrete, Resisting load is probably uh, much stronger than what actually needs <laughs> needs to be present for for what I'm doing. But since this is a you know a flat section, you know I went ahead and I put the fence on the back side and I'm putting uh, hardware cloth on either side, and I might even build in a couple you know structural <laughs> like planter bowls or something just to give some some shape to the wall to help resist movement but I have a you know concrete footer on the bottom and then I have this this uh, flange on the top and all this yeah, should be sufficient all right what I'm working on is uh, some of these little finish detail areas you know so I, I went ahead and pre-cut and bent my piece just try to get it in here. I'm going to be doing that uh, stabbing hook procedure. <laughs> I'm going to get this corner sucked down as tight as I can and just work it from here. Make another hook.
but once I get this corner nice and squared off or whatever you call this gentle curved <laughs> you know get that stuck back best I can then I can start working on these other corners here and here then I'll cut it and fold it over but these little finish touches they're always the hardest but once I get everything roughed in then I'm gonna do the big crazy jab through <laughs> a million little wire ties and try to get it all finished off you know if if I had help here I could just stab them and someone else could twist them but this is a solo project today that's just what you got to do so I'm using a uh, 17 gauge wire and this is made in the USA the 17 gauge wire that's made in China <laughs> it's not quite the same thing <laughs> I don't know what unit of measure they use but it's a uh, it's not as good a wire it doesn't have the tensile strength it doesn't tighten up as well but it's also a smaller diameter so it's just the 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 lion so this red brand that's some good good stuff let me yeah so th this is uh galvanized electric fence wire and so is this this uh fi shock 17 gauge this this was pretty crappy it, it was hard to get a nice good twist on the wire using this stuff so i'm not going to buy that again it's worth the extra money to buy the real made in america legit wire I mean, the wire placement of wire ties is not like the most critical thing, but there's there's certain places I, I prefer to go to. So, for instance, like this piece of metal here. If if I was wanting to make it tighter in a certain direction, I would hook it in such a way that other material, when tightening it, would cause the wire to to pull it over yeah see see how this is slightly off center of, of that that piece of fence underneath it if I put it on on like this it might pull it over just a, a millimeter whereas if I if I hooked it through a bunch of stuff like this it would tighten it this direction so tightening this up I'm gonna start with my, my bottom pieces and work my way out kind of like tightening the the bolts on a cylinder head <laughs> you know you want to make sure you get it flat otherwise you have to come back with more ties later and work out the pooches so I got a couple options here you know one option is I can just cut this straight down and fold this piece over. Another option is I could uh, cut it this way and wrap it around that way. Or you could do a more advanced thing, cut over and over, and then you could fold it over and have a little piece stubbed up. What I'm thinking is I'm gonna go ahead and just cut this thing free, fold it over. Now, what do I want? Thinking about it too hard will mess you up, bro. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna match the height of this. So and that'll give me a nice area to work with. So as you can see, hopefully I don't know if the angle's right. But I have, I have this sort of worked up high. I'm, I'm folding this over and it's going down to the reinforcing. So the, the theory on that is, is I'm gonna try to get this, this uh, step to be flat. So I'm gonna build up the concrete. I'm gonna just float it out you know, uh, this direction. That way I don't have this top step angling down because I kind of had a hard time working out the, 
the shapes of all this. So I just need to finish, you know, piece milling these different parts in until I get to more finished product like this other side. So these stairs have taken me <laughs> way longer than I thought they would, but I think it's going to be a, a, you know, a nice permanent feature for this wall. And it'll give us a little closer access to uh, our parking area. And it will, I don't know, it's nice to have some complicated built-in stuff <laughs> when you're doing fair cement. Because that's the whole point. You can do anything with it. You can make any shape you want. And why not? Why not try to <laughs> do, do something a little artsy every now and again? Oh my goodness. Okay, I finally got this thing wrapped. It took a couple days. Uh, anyways, you can see, you know, there's lumps and bumps going, you know, over pieces of rebar, various inconsistencies or whatever. You just float, float them out. You know, uh, not quite as easy as it sounds. You know, floating this out. This was, I mean, this was floated out also, and you know, it's got, got whatever. It's got some handcrafted look to it, but yeah, getting close. Now I just need to poke through all my wire ties and suck this up a little bit. I think I'm gonna go ahead and uh, go a few more feet with, with everything, because what I'd like to do in in one go is get all this done. And then maybe end it at a at an angle, because I like I like the cold joints diagonal instead of vertical like that one. That just seems like that'd be a weak spot versus uh, how these you know fit together like puzzle pieces. And see over there the zigzag. That just that seems better to me. Alrighty, so I'm wrapping this up here. I cut a little notch. I can get everything to fit and I'm just giving it a little gentle bend working my way around trying to make sure I can keep it kind of tight Oops. all right let me make a couple uh, wire ties real quick Okay, so I'm somewhere in the middle. What I'm thinking is I'll just start here. Oh. Alright, so again, I'm placing these where I can grab a piece of metal that when I tighten it, it'll pull it a little tighter. If I can get my, my tool on there. I'm just going to continue that until I get this done. Try to get the curve out of that a little bit. So I'm going to overlap this piece on this. You know, three squares is kind of what I like doing for no particular reason. I'm going to try to line this up with the grid a little. Yeah, sure. Why not? That's good. something like that. I'm going to work my way sideways. I'm just going to get this tacked up fairly flat and go around the other side and poke everything through so I can twist it up. So I have a rebar height set around because I was planning on cutting this when I built it. I'm going to go ahead and uh, see if I can get to everything. Uh, 
Uh, I don't know what I'm doing <laughs> here right now. I'm just going to tack this up and get that kind of started. And I'm going to try to shape it. I'm going to use a couple uh, pigtails here just to hold it. Alright, let me get you a better angle. Uh, that's what I got so far. Um, so this is just you know, tacked up there. What I like to do is I want to leave this bottom one open so I'm going to you know, figure out how to shape that so it pushes in so I can have at least two thirds of the original circle left in, uh, in the bottom here. I'm going to try to turn this into some curvy thing. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see if that's possible. I'm just going to work on my, on my curve here a little bit. I got this little pipe wrench. Huh. What if I need to... There we go. Work that curve out. Right here. What would happen if I just push that in? Hmm. It's starting to look like a lima bean. So I got all my metal up and I just need to uh, tie off these loose ends here. I have a bit of a bubble in this bottom piece. I'm thinking I might be able just to get it to disappear somewhat with some more ties. So I'm using this uh, galvanized electric fence wire. It's uh, 17 gauge. So the technique I'm going to be using here is I'm going to be poking it through and pulling it back. So I'm going to make my little hoop, poke it through, stab it, pull it tight, and give it some twists. So I'm going to snip it fairly flat. You don't want to cut too short, you know, because because it sucks having these things poking out and then you're like ripping your gloves and stuff. But if you cut them too short where they're just barely hooked, you know, a lot of times they'll fail on you. So. You need to try to leave at least one full twist, hold it together before it gets all. So let me give you a closer view of this. Alright, so I'm just going to look for something to, to get a bite on. I'm going to hook the uh, back piece of hardware cloth and the front piece of hardware cloth. Trim my piece down. Twist it tight. Let's see what happens. If you just keep twisting, it'll uh, twist itself off. Sometimes it twists out the bottom, the middle, the end. Then over here, we still have our our flap and our bubble. I'm gonna I'm gonna get one from this side, one from this side, and just maybe put four here. And try to erase that bubble. Uh, Typically, I like to go all the way through the wall and squeeze it together, get everything nice under tension. But I've uh, built in a little cavity here, which is going to be a you know concrete beam to help support this retaining wall. So I'm just going to, with a little short use, Twist that up, and I'll snip it off. So you know Doug Lacey from the Shambhala Village channel, he, uh, with his type of ferro cement, he'll do uh, a hog ties, you know, hog ring ties. I've never done that myself. My dad said he messed around with it, but thought it lacked the, the control but we didn't have like a, a pneumatic uh, hog ring gun that he used, which would make it go a lot better than the hand pliers, I guess. A lot faster, at least. Okay, so what I have going on 
right here is I place this tie but when I twist it tight it gives me uh, so you can see that it gives me a bubble up here so I'm going to remove this tie and I'm going to place it a little more carefully so what I had done was I, I hooked it right below the line and when I pull it tight it's causing it to pucker up a little bit so I'm going to uh, get it right above that piece of metal now and as I tighten it that should pull some tension on this and get rid of that upper bubble I mean, you don't have to be this careful with all the ties but I am trying to get this to look kind of flat because there's only so much you can float out with the uh, you know the the mud on top you know it's it's not as easy as you think to to float out some of these vertical surfaces but there are uh, you know took a bunch of ties but the bubble is you know more or less gone and I'm happy with it well that's it for this episode uh, next time we're gonna be throwing mud and doing fiber reinforced fair cement so with these fibers I don't know if I need to break them up or if they break up on their own so I'm just gonna dump them in the data sheet said they disperse perfectly all by themselves I don't know it's, it's a little wetter than I, I typically like but it's holding its shape pretty well and wow those fibers I don't know can can it focus on that do you see sparkly of the fibers they really have dispersed everywhere so I think we're good to go well this is the real end of the video so the next video as I said will be real mud work but just to catch you up on what we're actually doing like today as I edit this video on uh, uh, 4 12 18 is we're, we're working on the pony wall and we're we're throwing up uh, sheathing on the side of it and and we're getting ready to actually put put a roof on top of the dome and again we, we cut the top of the dome off in 2005 or 6 or something like that so it's been a long time coming we am, of course we haven't been working continuously on this but hair. it, it oh my goodness. it's something that we've wanted for a very long time so it's very exciting getting close to, to having the the dome closed in you know probably I'll throw a video up of just working on the pony wall well that that is if I filmed enough of that to actually make a decent video but you know, whatever yeah there's 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 lots to come and then we're gonna we're gonna take a little break from the ferrous cement and, and do the roof and then we're gonna be back into the ferrous cement work so anyways <laughs> sorry for the long rambling ending uh, thank you so much and I'll catch y'all next time Mmm, a yummy little snack, huh? <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs>